today I get to bring you along for a little bit of a Dutch oven 101, if you will. And just get out of the way what I do and how I cook and how I think about my Dutch ovens. And I didn't bring them all in today just because um, uh, there's a few out there and they're big and they're heavy. So I'll probably have my husband's help to get some of those out of the shed for you. But I don't use those all the time. Um, and I don't get to use these near enough. Now I do have, this is a four quart. I misspoke in another video and said it was a five quart, but I think, but it's a four quart Dutch oven. And this is a one quart Dutch oven. Um, I did order a little, it's called a three quarter quart mini. So that should be coming in the next day or two. And then I have this little, um, this is by Lodge. This was a Lewis and Clark Dutch oven. It's got even the slot for um, you to put a, th a thermostat or a thermometer in there if you wanted to check the temperature. A lot of Dutch ovens have that little notch out. Um, these two do not. Now, I feel like these two are, are, they're my favorites. It's the perfect size to have a main dish by itself and maybe a side of cornbread or a dessert or a side dish, it's perfect. Or I can do a dessert in this one. After each and every use, I wash them out with hot, hot water and get any food debris out of there and wash the lid off. And then I um, dry them out, hand dry, put them over a flame, either on my gas stove or in camp over the camp chef stove. And when they just come to that smoking point, then I spray, well, in camp I don't. In camp I use bacon grease. And if I have it here at home, that's what I use too. But if I, if I don't have bacon grease out, I will use either this Lodge seasoning spray, which is 100% canola oil, or um, Camp Chef's cast iron, um, conditioner and this one's a little harder to use in the winter because it's hard to get out. It's pretty stiff. Spread that on there evenly with paper toweling. Let it come up to a smoke and once it has hit you see a waft of smoke coming off of that, I leave for maybe 20 seconds, turn the burner off, wipe any excess out and you are good to go. Let them cool down on their own. And then I store them, for these two, I store them in carrying bags. And these bags are machine, I mean, washing machines. I've washed both of these since we got home from our camping trip. They clean up really nice. They're padded so your stuff isn't clanging around if you're uh, camping uh, and having to pack. Plus you've got convenient handles. It also protects your item from weathering and um, if you store them like s some of the ones I have out in the shed, if you store them out there, it keeps um, any elements or critters that might be able to get on them, even though all you have to do is wash them and reseason them. So that's what I do. And I, I want you guys who are coming along for this, if you're new, if you're not new, don't you can skip forward, but if you think of this as an oven, and Dutch ovens came about, I mean, they've been around a long, long time. Um, and I believe that uh, Mormon settlers, this is what they had to cook with on a campfire. So they had to learn to use this to bake their bread, to do their stews. I mean, it wasn't just an open kettle. So they used it as a an oven. And so if you put coals on the top and coals underneath, it bakes. Um, you don't always need that. You can use this as a braising pot on top of the stove or on top of coals. You don't have to be, um, you know, outside necessarily. You can do this over, over an open flame, but cast iron will take on an extreme amount of heat and you do have to watch it. You've got to keep it up away from the flame enough that you're not burning your food because you can burn your food pretty easily if you let it get too hot and it's hard to cool it back down. It doesn't cool down very fast. So I would say get yourself a small one and get yourself a four quart and that's enough to feed a family of four to six um, easily. And then get yourself your conditioners or use bacon fat. You wanna have a lid lifter. You definitely need a lid lifter. Keeps your hand away from the hot coals, keeps the lid steady. And um, you also want one of these trivets. 
either for the lid to sit on when it's got the hot coals or for your cast iron to stay up further away from the coals, kind of like a buffer. Um, so I really feel like these are necessary if you're gonna start Dutch oven cooking. And I will be getting a table to, ha to have. Camp Chef makes a Dutch oven table that you can put your coals on. It's got a little windbreak. Um, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and get one if I don't find something I like better just to be up off the ground. Uh, but I, I've honestly, I really enjoyed my little brick area that I put together. It kept the wind out of there perfectly. That's the only thing with the Camp Chef one, the wind break. It breaks wind for the underneath coals, but the top coals can be blown all over. And so I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm undecided how I'm going to do it. Um, so that is my recommendation. That's how I take care of them. I season them every single time a little bit so I never lose that seasoning. Now, if you didn't want to do that, you can look, at, because there's been times my husband's taken these camping and he certainly doesn't care for them the way I do. Um, or if you pick something up at a garage sale or an estate sale, you can tell if it looks dry. If it looks like it needs some tender loving care, chances are it needs some tender loving care. So uh, anyways, I hope you guys jump on board and start cooking with me. I'm going to go ahead. The poll that you guys took in a previous video on what you wanted to see was overwhelmingly entrees. And I haven't looked today, but that's what it was yesterday. So we're going to do some entrees for you and entree meaning it might all be in one pot or it might be in a couple, uh, two or three. Um, and then we'll go ahead and move on into side dishes and desserts and all that stuff too. I don't want to leave anything out because um, so many of you are trying to learn how to do this and are excited about doing something different and outside the norm. Um, I want to do one myth uh, for you. And I'll try to figure out maybe some other ones along the way that will help you. Um, don't be afraid to use tomatoes in your um, Dutch oven. Some people will say, oh, they're too high in acid, but our tomatoes really aren't that high in acid anymore. And it would take a lot to cause a reaction to your iron. So I wouldn't worry about that. And if your pot is seasoned well, it's not gonna hurt it one little bit. I use tomatoes all the time, chili, jambalaya. I never have an issue. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we're going to learn how to do bread. We're going to learn how to do cornbread. You're going to go, why do I cook inside the house? Because <laughs> you're going to enjoy it outside. And stuff that has high, um, I don't like to fry anything in the house. It's messy. Take it outside and do it outside. And, and it's more fun. It makes it uh, a little more convenient to have your food out there. You don't have any mess inside the house and it's easy cleanup. So you can also buy fry baskets for these. Um, I, I might or I might not. I, I've never seen a need for that, but um, okay, we're gonna post some stuff down below. I'm gonna try to post links for some cast iron. If it happens to be a size that is not what you want, go ahead and search for whatever size. In the search bar, put a four quart if, if I posted a six quart or, uh, you know, and it'll pop up and we'll still get credit for that. Um, if you end up purchasing, they cut us a little bit and it helps our channel out. It helps um, my grandson's college fund. Um, and I don't know that I can find a link for these, but I'll, I'll try to get you a link for these carrying bags too, because I think they're fantastic. It's, it definitely, for me, is a must if you're gonna take your Dutch ovens anywhere and um, great for storage. So I guess that's all I have to say. All right, guys, I, I, go ahead and leave me some ideas in the comment section of things you'd like to see cooked. So if you wanna see cornbread cooked in a Dutch oven, go ahead and you know ask for cornbread. If you wanna see um, spaghetti and meatballs or I, I, whatever it is, go ahead and leave that comment. Go back and forth with each other and um, Let's keep this community going on all this because I think we're really going to enjoy this particular series. I know a lot of you are really excited about it. All right, guys, I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe, hopefully Dutch oven recipe, coming up very, very soon. In the meantime, enjoy the other videos. All right.